Hi, everybody. So we have a special guest here, Mercer. He's been on show before. Leon's interviewed me as a LIE, um, if I'm right. Is it LIE? Right, ENTJ. Because he follows Oceanics. And he's also interviewed me for how to dig yourself out of a hole. Be sure to check that out. So I'm going to have a link to that interview down below. And in this interview, we're going to talk about uh, successful ENTJs and what we could learn from them. Mercer, what do you like to get started? The, the number one thing I think ENTJs are really good at it's uh, actually understanding systems, okay? They, well, we systemize everything that we do. And I think what other people can do is actually take the systems that we have created and use it themselves because we are system over self people. And so that means if the system works for us, you can figure out a way to make it work for you. Mm. We don't see ourselves as being that special. Right. So like, you can follow people like Julius Caesar um, and see like how he rose to power. And you can maybe potentially take the things that he used. They might be a little bit outdated, but the principles are still there. Right. Um, or you can take people like Napoleon, um, the fastest man to like rise to power in history um, and, and use um, his same template template for winning wars. Um, so if we start start with um, Julius Caesar, what, what's something that we could learn from him? So Julius Caesar was a man of ambition. He he always had his ambitions. So he, he really had his way of words and uh, he kind of knew how to build alliances. Right. He really knew how to build alliances. Um, and that's very important when it comes to becoming somebody of power. Right. What makes him an ENTJ? What makes Julius Caesar an ENTJ? Mm -hmm. um, one, he, he's, he's rather, in history, I'll say that he's rather pragmatic. And what I mean with pragmatic is means uh, self-determination. Right. Um, he's going to do things without asking for uh, too much permission. Um, if he sees something that he wants to do, he's not going to be worried about what the group is going to um, depict of it. He's just going to do it. Right. Uh, um, and you can see that throughout his campaigns and whatnot. He just that's just a quality of ENTJs, right. um, and he's not like completely a reckless person because, no. for instance, like in battle, he he knows that it's important as the person in charge to be all the way in the back giving orders mm -hmm. instead of like recklessly being in front and getting yourself killed. Yeah, um, he he's a very um, systematic guy. Uh, strategy ENTJs or INTJs, you can also put them in there, are very strategic uh, people. Mm -hmm. um, so with Julius Caesar, for him, he, he went through things a, di a little bit differently than Napoleon. Mm -hmm. Napoleon, he really believed in speed and he really revolutionized uh, warfare with speed. As in Julius Caesar, um, was, he was just a world-class uh, strategist way above his time. And the way that he, he went about it was a little bit different. But why he's an ENTJ, so one, he's pragmatic. Two, he really controls chaos. You can really tell an ENTJ because if in a chaotic situation, they will reduce the chaos. How did they do that? I think how they do it is just by systematizing things. Hmm. They'll just systematize everything until the chaos is gone. Hmm. Or like in time, in times of distress, like they just really know how to handle those things. And they have a very high tolerance of, of patience. Hmm. You know, they, they really see things through. They always have a plan. Okay, that's where the introverted intuition comes in. There's a plan. There's the patience. The patience, the plan, and a lot of time when there's a lot of stress, people freak out. But these people are, are really made for those the, the, those types of times. Right. Um, but I think it really goes back to always kind of having a plan. You got to have a plan, and you got to be able to execute the plan. You can't just have a plan and not execute the plan, because that, that's a a problem with a lot of people. They may have a plan, but then they have trouble executing it. Right. Or they have a hard time being able to get people on their side because that's another important thing of, you know, rising, rising to power. You have to have other people on your side. You can't do it alone. And that's something that Julius Caesar did. He rose up the ranks. And when the time was right, he was ready to take it, you know, mm -hmm. uh, chase Pompey all the way down, you know, right. you know, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's like um, he's. He's going after his expert sensing, so that's where his ambition comes from, but in a very judicial kind of way, like very, very planned 
and mm-hmm. long term thinking way of getting being able to rise to the top. And it's seizing the moment because right. uh, when he when he had the army and he came back, you know, he knew exactly what he what he was gonna do, and he knew like that was the time. Like if he wait if he waited too long, he he would have lost. So right. he he and Mark Anthony kind of sat and went straight after them like no rest, you know. Come back just straight after them, and you know that the, uh, that's what led to his victory. That that's Julius Caesar. But my favorite has always been Napoleon. Mm-hmm. Reason about for Napoleon is is and the thing about another thing about ENTJs is they don't really care about the past. Like they're not big on the past. Right. So like they have no respect for the past. How does that so, look like? How does that look like? If you ask them about the past too much, they'll start getting annoyed. If you know ENTJ, start talking about the past and see see what they say. You know, mm-hmm. like, it's just not not something they're really fond of. Like it, the past absolutely means nothing to them. Mm-hmm. It's essentially dead. So, and in the, eyes eyes of the ENTJ, what's wrong with the past? Um, what's wrong with the past? This is from my perspective. The past is dead, and there's nothing you can do but learn from it and move forward. Mm-hmm. So there's no point like in dwelling on anything from the past. It's dead. Like you, you can't move. Like you either have two choices: drop and die now, or move forward. So that's pretty much the mindset. Like you, you can't do anything with the past. The past has already happened. You can't go back and change anything. The only thing you can change is the future. Mm-hmm. So did you learn from it? Okay, if you learn from it, don't let it happen again. That's the mindset. This is coming from the polar introvert sensing that it's it's very weak and also very unvalued. Yeah. So yeah, it's very. I mean, it's called SI trickster. So they just keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Um, I think about that though is ENTJs can burn out mm. because they just keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, and they don't have their own internal sensation under watch. But right. back to Napoleon. Napoleon he revolutionized the way that uh, the wars are fought. Um, there's several of opponents that were kind of waiting for Napoleon and thought you know they would follow. People from the past, I forget the actual region um, the people were from, but they were waiting for Napoleon to move. And they really thought that they would follow the same methods that somebody from the past used. Right. And Napoleon smoked them. Hmm. He literally smoked them with pure speed and um, and maneuvering. Yeah, they had like a lot of discipline. Like those units that they had were very disciplined, but... Napoleon just changed the way he did things with speed. Like I think it was the 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 movement, the way that Napoleon could use movement. Another guy who was able to to really uh, change up um, warfare with movement was Genghis Khan with the horses. Right. The horses he was able to right. move so fast that it just mm-hmm. outmaneuvered people. So yeah, that happened in the beginning of uh, World War Two too, when uh, the French expected the Germans to kind of fight the same way as World War One. Yeah, the Blitz raid. Right. Blitz raid. Um, right. You can learn little things from these people. Um, I think with Julius Caesar, you just got to understand, you got to be really good with people. Mm-hmm. You got to be really good with people because not only was he like a strategist, but he was also really good with people and being able to get good alliances. I think Napoleon was just very, he just knew how to revolutionize war. He he was planning, they, were, they talked about Napoleon like pulling out like maps and stuff and like looking at them for weeks, you know, just going right. in his room, just like studying the maps. Right. Um, so you're emphasizing here, like now these, these two also develop the, their non-value functions to an extent. So you could say that Julius Caesar kind of tapped into his expert feeling side. And then um, perhaps Napoleon got a bit into his expert intuition here with innovation. Uh, yeah. But the thing is, is in socionics, they, Six functions are actually very strong in ENTJs. Right. So I can't say that you're really tapping into it because it's actually really strong. Right. <laughs> um, I think a lot of people get that confused in realms of strength. Mm-hmm. The six function is probably as strong as the parent, sometimes even stronger than the parent. Right. Mm-hmm. So you got you to be very ca- careful with that. Right. But the extroverted feeling, I think uh, Julius Caesar was able to tap into. Um, right. Um, Great. And it kind of reads just like the profile of the ENTJ, like when from socionics with the LIE, when they tap into extra feeling, that's kind of how it looks like. They read up and they research how to be able to connect with others. Yeah. I mean, they're very confident people um, in mm-hmm. general, and they bring up a, a, about this confidence with them. Mm-hmm. And so people are willing to buy into that. And 
the the bottom line is that ENTJs get things done. Mm. Like, and people buy into people that can get things done over time. Um, mm. it's, that's just naturally how things go. If you if you win with this person, you're gonna naturally want to keep pairing up with that person. Right. And so these people can easily rise the ranks very quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, with that, because they have a get things done type of mentality. If if I was to climb into the minds of Julius Caesar and Napoleon, why did they want to do what they're doing? It's just in them. Um, right. I think the ambition is just there. To them, achievement outside things just means everything to them. Right. Um, Achievement's like a very big theme for ENTJs. Yeah, achievement is outside resources. It's mm-hmm. they, they just value that more than anything. Right. Like it's just having the biggest thing this or being the best at this. It's just like it goes into that what they would call NT core, which is competency and mastery. They really right. dive into that and uh, self mastery. No, and, com- compared to the other NTs, they bring it more to power. Like yeah, the- well, because they have a little bit higher SE, right? So they're able to implement their visions a lot better than. The other NTs. So it's like very clear how they're using the both these examples here. They're using expert thinking, intro intuition, expert sensing. Does the intro feeling show through for both of them? So when when you when you're looking at uh, ENTJs, the introverted feeling is kind of on the axis. So the more they use the TE, the less they're going to use the FI. And ENTJs are very like, especially men uh, ENTJs. They're really not big fans of using FI because it actually gets in the way of their systems. Right. And to an ENTJ, too much FI on the system can actually cause it to not be as effective. Mm-hmm. But eventually right. later in life, they tend to put a little bit more FI onto onto the systems and hand it back to the people. And you'll see that with like Ray Dalio, where right. he this his book called Principles. Mm-hmm. You know, he's trying to help everybody else figure out principles for themselves so that they can be better. So I find um, like a bit of a personal cause behind, mm-hmm. like after they develop their systems well. Mm-hmm. Because at, at first I think the ENTJ is really trying to make it. And then later in life, they get back. So it's the same make. thing with uh, Bill Gates too. Well, Bill Gates is, yeah, Bill Gates. Uh, I think he's INTP, man. Okay. <laughs> you, you can tell with his style. Uh, you could tell with his style compared to other uh, ENTJs. He's informative when he talks as well, not direct. So I, I would actually say that he's INTP the same as Elon Musk. Okay. Uh, um. Uh, so what other like famous ENTJs can we uh, potentially draw from? Oh my God. Um. So one of the guys I watch all the time is Patrick Bet David. Mm-hmm. He's on YouTube, and if you're trying to become like a successful entrepreneur, or or, or not. He has tons of videos and he talks about a thing that ENTJs like to do a lot. It's called it's, it's reading. We really like right. to read a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, T Hero really loves to read. He is a little bit on the extreme. He talks about have have read over 4,000 books. Wow. 4,000 books. And in one video where he's, he's, he's like grading you, he says like, if you read 24 books a year, you're a part-time reader, right? 24. So that's two books a month. I mean, yeah, two bucks a month. He said, if you read uh, 48, you are, what do you say? You said you're all, almost full. You said you're full time. You said you're full time. Uh, but the average CEO reads 58 books a year. Mm-hmm. Okay. Wow. Okay. Really? As busy as they are. As busy as they are, they're still. And reading. CEO being like the yeah. mostly ENTJ profession. It is mostly the, it, it's it's a lot. It's a lot of different ones. Um, you got INTPs up there. You got Warren Buffett up there. He's an ISTJ. Uh, so you you got a lot of different. But at the bottom, the bottom line is they're reading. Right. Okay, if you want to get to that level, you you're going to have to read. And Pat, Patrick Bet Davis said, if you really want to be a full like a big time achiever, you have to read a hundred books a year. Wow. One thing I'm interested in is what are some potential weaknesses? Because obviously, uh, in the end, Julius Caesar and Napoleon, they didn't really end up in, in good places. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> one thing that is a bad thing for ENTJs is they can really burn out their people. Right. With the SI uh, polar, they can really burn people out. So mm-hmm. over time, you know, you have exhausted your people. 
Mm-hmm. You know, you gotta you gotta know when to let go. You know, and let right. people rest and, and rejuvenate, mm-hmm. and uh, stop pushing them. Two, you kind of gotta try to be aware of people. Like, um, if if you're not aware of people, the same thing can happen to you. Like, or you get so focused in a certain thing that you're not checking the rest of everything else. Like Napoleon, he mm-hmm. he wasn't checking like the the resources of France, and they kind of dropped. And that cost him his ass because at the end of the day, if taxes go too high and debt goes too high, people get unhappy. Right. And that's usually what happens. Um, also, he's pushing so much, he pushed into a bad situation. Hmm. But that's just the nature of the beast. You, you aren't always going to win every everything you do. That's what you can do. I think the biggest weakness with ENTJs is, is a family. I think they do we, we, we do so well in all aspects of a life, but then we don't do well in that aspect. And and that's because it takes a lot of extroverted feeling. Right. Mm-hmm. Can you explain that a bit more, I guess, like in terms of intimate uh, relationships, such as a family? Um, I think it's, it's harder to understand people. Mm-hmm. Um, you can't systematize people. And I think ENTJs really go after even, e- even try to do that, even though they can't. Um, and that you can yield very bad results hmm. um, because you're you're trying to systemize people instead of trying to actually understand them, hmm. or you're trying to, you know push them with your SI. I mean, SE child with you know SI polar, you could burn your kids out, your wife out, whatever. And people at the end of the day just want to be heard and they want to be listened to. Hmm. And I, I think as an ENTJ, they're thinking about they're pushing themselves onto other people. What they want, they push on the other people and think other people want it. And that's just not the case. And that's just something they have to learn. And I think family issues with family people, anything family related is going to be the toughest task for them. It's not being successful. I think that comes very easy to them. But maintaining a, a healthy family relationship, uh, work-life balance is, is going to always be a problem for ENTJ. One thing you can learn from ENTJ is like Patrick Bet David, you just give him a watch, man, and um, pick up on the systems that he used, you know, we'll give you one, two, three systems to check. And this can actually make you more productive. Um, th- these people like ENTJs treat uh, themselves as just byproducts, you know, and the system is over them. So this, if the system works for them, it can work for you as well. Um, all you have to do is go out and give it a try and, and see what you like. You know, th- there's Ray Dalio, his book principles. I highly recommend you read if you haven't read it. He's absolutely phenomenal. Um, and his biggest things is learning how to deal with things that you don't know. Mm. So if you can systematize enough stuff, you can have a system to deal with things that you don't know because that's where you really make mistakes in life is, you know, okay, I don't know about cars. So something happens to your car and um, you have to go deal with a mechanic. Okay, how do you take a, a take, like how do you own that interaction? Now, if you put in a system in place, you're you're in a way better chance of coming out on top. But if you don't know anything, people take advantage of people that don't know anything. Right. So this is how it is. So you got to, like he says in his book, you got to have something to deal with the things that you do not know. I don't know if it's written by an ENTJ, but Atomic Habits is a very expert thinking kind of book. I, I've read it. Um, that was one of the ones I haven't reread. I like to try to read read uh books like several times to mm. kind of master them to really inculcate the knowledge yeah to really and i try to uh use it you know like i try if i read a book i try to figure out a way to use it mm. uh, but your si is a lot higher than mine so you will remember what you read like the first time <laughs> as for me it, uh i'll re- remember something so i have to continue to continue to read it i'll probably like let's say robert robert green's 48 laws of power i read that book over 15 15 times wow you know? Again, the things go back to what I was saying is is you can learn these systems that they have and implement them in your life and you can become more productive by doing that and get better uh, outcomes and rewards in life. These systems aren't just for them. Like we like when ENTJs devise something, they don't think, oh, th- I'm special. So I'm devising a system. That's not that's not what happens. It's I suck. Let me devise a system to help me. So, like, you you can do that with anything. Um, And it gives you a little bit more element control of your life. 
Right. But I think that's one of the things that you can really learn from an ENTJ is just implementing their systems. You, you, you know, not everybody is as good as they are with TE. So if you're not as good as them, you can learn from them. Um, probably don't want to learn anything from family life from them. Let <laughs> um, me be honest with you. Um, right. Yeah. That that makes sense. Every every single type they have their strong areas. You can always learn from the best of. Oh, you know, if this type is good at this thing, you learn that thing, right? And the other thing you can learn about is the introverted intuition because you know Ray Dalio is pretty apparent yeah. in that. Yeah, he he's really good. He's so good that he actually typed himself ENTP. Hmm. Uh, but in his communication style, if you watch him, he's very direct. And direct means that you're telling people you 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 feel comfortable telling someone what to do. Hmm. Okay. Uh, so that's what usually goes with direct language. And you could tell that Ray Dalio feels very comfortable telling people what to do. As of somebody like yourself, Leon, you mm-hmm. you probably don't feel that comfortable telling somebody what to do, do you? Um, well, it depends. I think like um, in my workshops, I tend to be more direct. But mm-hmm. um, but I think, yeah, in general, in my day-to-day style, it's more informative. Yeah. So that that's one thing you can you can notice with other types, you know. Um, so mm-hmm. ETS would be direct. Pragmatic. Pragmatic means they believe in like self determination. If they see it, they're gonna do it. That type of thing. Uh, and they're systematic, so they're mm-hmm. always like you know using systems. Mm-hmm. They don't think about like people interactions and the outcome focus uh, and abstract. They usually have abstract ideas. Um, they're bringing the abstract into reality. Um, so that's another way you can identify these guys, um, and it helps a lot. Um, but uh, again, like I said, the systems, take the systems. Um, and another thing I would say is try to implement things that you read. That's a good sign of competency. Right, if, you, absolutely. if you read something and you can actually implement it, that means you you learn something. If you read it and you don't use it, you, you didn't learn anything. That's actually true. Time. Yeah. Well, I, the thing is, I, I like um, I host workshops every single week, and it's always based on things that I've learned, right? And I make sure to implement it in my life so that I'm a better teacher when I teach. And when I teach, that reinforces um, how I'm able to implement the knowledge in my life and also how I'm able to share it with my clients, like the, the, the knowledge with my clients. Wow, so that's, that's pretty good, Leon. I mean, right. I, I, got, I have a teaching system in place for that. Right? Yeah. There's an area in my life which is like very <laughs> TE stronghold. Yeah, yeah, that, that that that's really good. A lot of people struggle with that, right. um, but it's implementing things that you read or trying things, you know, and trying to be, trying. Sometimes you're not gonna have the best system. Like sometimes when I try things, I have a one-two system, but when I interact with that thing, it's I fine-tune it into the best system, you know, um, right. over time. You develop so, the nuances of the system over time. Over time, and once you learn how to make one system better, uh, the next time you go to implement a system, it gets even faster and better the next time. And right. um, I think uh, ENTJs have been doing that throughout their life. So when they get older, um, they can actually implement things very quickly and very fast. But they just got to make sure they don't rub the wrong people the wrong way. Mercer, thank you so much for being on my show and, and sharing uh, your knowledge about the ENT- ENTJ and what we can learn from ENTJs. It was it was a complete honor, man. Uh, Leon, you're doing great things. Thank you. Uh, I like uh, just how you really take your time to uh, express your ideas, hmm. um, especially on your YouTube. Um, there's not a lot of people that know about socionics or the strength levels, and I learned that from you. Um, Thank so, you. So you know, uh, you take you really take your time. Um, yeah. So appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, and definitely check out uh, my interview with Mercer. He talks about getting yourself out of hole. So if you want to learn how to do that, take a look at that. I have a link to it down below and also uh, Mercer's uh, Facebook group as well. And like that dig yourself out of hole, that's just a system in itself, you know. <laughs> that's just a TE system to help you uh, to get out of hole. That's just something I use. So um, yeah. it works for me. It works for you. Thank you, Leon. Yeah, it's, it's very clear cut and also efficient advice. So I really recommend it.